This program is made possible by the giving of the God Called Partners of Renner Ministries. Well, friend, here I am still seated on the probable ruins of Noah's Ark. But as I've told you, for me, it's not probable. I really believe these are the ruins of the real Noah's Ark, which landed in the lower mountains of Ararat. The Bible does not say that the Ark landed on the Mount Ararat. Ararat at that time was a very large mountain range. And what today is called Mount Ararat was not even called Mount Ararat at that time. This was just a large mountain range. And the Bible says very precisely that the ark came to rest in the mountains of Ararat. Well, that's where I am and that's where this ship formation is. But the reason that God sent the flood was because the earth had been corrupted. Mankind had been corrupted because of a strange mixture between angels and women. And the women gave birth to giants. And the Bible tells us about that in Genesis. This is chapter 6, verse 4. And there were giants in the earth in those days. And also after that, when the sons of God came in unto the daughters of men and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were men of old, men of renown. And God saw that the wickedness of man was very great in the earth. So these giants brought real violence, corruption, and wickedness into the earth. Well, what do we know about these giants outside of the Bible? You may say, ah, oh, it's just a biblical myth. Well, what do we know about what other ancient voices said about these giants? And because ancient writers wrote a lot of information about past history, today we're going to be looking very specifically at what ancient voices really said about the giants which once populated the earth before the flood. It's going to be amazing. That is what I'm going to be talking to you about today. Stay tuned for a teaching you can trust, a message that will inspire, strengthen, and equip you with vital insights and understanding from the Word of God. Here is Rick. Welcome to today's program, my friends. This is Rick Renner. I've been sitting in this chair just waiting for this moment so we can return to our study about fallen angels, giants, monsters, and the world before the flood. It's my brand new 15-part series that I really want you to have. Hey, I'm so serious about teaching this series. I went all the way to the mountains of Ararat to document the ruins of Noah's Ark. My friends, I really want you to see what the Bible teaches and to understand this is not a legend, it's not a fantasy, it's not mythology. This is really an event that took place. But the series that I want you to order is called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters in the World Before the Flood. There is no way you can just recall everything by just hearing the program every day. You need to hear it and hear it, see it and see it, really study it. You know, Jesus said, that as it was in the days of Noah, that's the way that it will be before the coming of the Son of Man. And that's why I'm teaching this series. Whatever was happening before the flood is going to be replicated just before the coming of Jesus, which means a lot of the nonsense we're seeing today is a repeat. And my friends, according to the words of Jesus, it's going to get even more bizarre before Jesus comes. So we need to go back into the past and see what occurred before the flood. And that's why I want you to have this series, which comes with a tremendous study guide. You will just devour it. And right now we're also offering you a book by Dr. Dennis Lindsay, a book that I read in one setting from cover to cover. It's called Fallen Angels, Giants, and the Return of the Nephilim. This book is tremendous. You will just devour it. And if you consider yourself to be a lover of the Bible, this will answer a lot of questions for you. You know, today, if you watch certain TV programs, they talk about ancient aliens and ancient alien theorists, and they come up with all these ideas about aliens who came to the earth. Well, they are correct that something came to the earth, but it wasn't aliens. It was angels who were mutinous against God. The Bible tells us about it very, very clearly. And when they came, they cohabitated with women and produced giants. They brought all kinds of technology, which is referred to in the ancient commentary called 
first Enoch. Anyway, all of that is in this series, but order this book too. This book will really be a blessing to you. But hey, today I want you to reach for your Bible. We have a lot of material to cover today, and we always use the Bible in this program because we're firm believers in the Word of God. But we've been reading and studying about Noah, and in Genesis chapter 5, verse 32, it says, And Noah was 500 years old, and Noah and his wife begat Shem, Ham, and Jephthah. But we've seen in previous programs that this bizarre event with angels abandoning their posts and commingling with women began in the days of the patriarch Jared. Jared was the great, great grandfather of Noah. He gave birth to Enoch. Enoch was the great grandfather of Noah. He gave birth to Methuselah, who was the grandfather of Noah. Methuselah gave birth to Lamech, who was the father of Noah. Finally, we come to Noah. Now, all of these events apparently begin to happen during the days of Jared. Enoch walked with God. He was the first prophet. Methuselah's name was prophetic. It means when he dies, then it will come, speaking of the judgment. And all of these prophetic words and revelations had been passed from one patriarch to the next to the next. God was revealing step by step that eventually a time would come when he would deal with these mutinous angels and the violence and the corruption that had defiled the earth. And this leads us to Hebrews 11, verse 7, which says, by faith. Noah, being warned of God of things to come, uh, things not seen as yet, moved with fear and prepared an ark to the saving of his house. Well, we certainly know from Genesis chapter 6 that God spoke directly to Noah. But in addition to that, Noah came from a family line that was filled with prophetic individuals. He knew the words which had been given to Jared. He knew the words which had been given to Enoch. He knew how these prophetic words had been given to Methuselah, passed on to his own father and finally to him. And it makes me wonder how much of this warning that he received from God was not just what he directly heard, but it was because of the godly influence of his predecessors who instructed him and told him, God has told us that a judgment is coming. And my friends, this shows me how one generation can pass the word of God and a revelation from generation to generation. And it makes me want to ask you, what are you doing to pass the word of God? Onto your children. We need to do like Noah's predecessors and pass the word of God on to them. But one thing is sure, Enoch, who was in that group, had received so many experiences with fallen angels and words from God, and many of those events and experiences were recorded in what is called First Enoch, which is not a book of the Bible, but it's a very serious, very ancient source. But when you come to Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, again we see the Bible says, And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, and we've seen that by this time there were millions of people. Verse 2, and daughters were born unto them. The sons of God saw that the daughters of men that they were fair, and they took wives of all that they chose. And the result of this is in Genesis chapter 6, verse 4, which says, There were giants in the earth in those days. The word giants is the word Nephilim. I'm going to give you the meaning of that word in just a moment. And there were giants in the earth in those days, and also after that, when the sons of God, or these mutinous angels, came in unto the daughters of men, and they bare children to them, the same became mighty men, which were of old men of renown. These angels and women produced an unnatural offspring, produced giants, monstrous beings, which the Bible calls giants, which in Hebrew is the word Nephilim. And the word Nephilim means fallen ones. It describes those that were physically enormous, those who possessed unnatural strength and who propagated evil and violence. They were immense in size. They were enormous. We know that when they spoke, their sound was simply terrifying. And a linguistic study of this word Nephilim really means they were giant and they were monstrous. And they were the Nephilim. They were the fallen ones. They were an aberration. There was nothing normal about them. Now, somebody might say, ah, oh, it's just all mythology. No, 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 it isn't. In fact, today I'm going to be quoting what ancient sources wrote about the fallen angels 
and the giants. But when you come to Genesis 6, verse 5, it says, God saw the wickedness of man that was great in the earth and that every imagination of the thoughts of his heart was evil continually, verse 6. And it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him at his heart, verse 7. And the Lord said, I will destroy man whom I have created from the face of the earth, both man and beast, and the creeping thing and the fowls of the air, for it repented me that I have made them, verse 11. The earth also was corrupt before the Lord and the earth was filled with violence. Violence. Wow. But what do we know about these Giants. Well, many legends have been added over all of the thousands of years. But if we go back to early history, we find that there were notable voices who wrote many things about the fallen angels that produced giants. And today we're going to begin with Josephus, and I'm going to be reading a lot to you because I want you to see, my friends, this is not the byproduct of a wild imagination or just fiction. These are historical events that were spoken of by early historical sources. Josephus said, for many angels of God accompanied with women and begat sons and proved unjust and despisers of all that was good on account of their confidence that they had in their own strength. For the tradition is that these men did what resembled the acts of those whom the Grecians called giants. The giants had bodies so large and countenance so entirely different than other men that they were amazing to the sight and terrible to the hearing. The bones of these men are still shown to this very day, unlike any credible elations of other men. Then we have the writings of Clement of Alexandria, who said, Angels partook of human lust, and being brought under its subjection, they fell into cohabitation with women. But from their unhallowed intercourse, spurious men sprang much greater in stature than ordinary men, whom they afterwards called giants." wild in manners and greater than men in size inasmuch as they were sprung of angels yet less than angels as they were born of women and not being pleased with purity of food they longed only after the taste of blood wherefore they first tasted flesh all things therefore going from bad to worse on account of these brutal demons, God wished to cast them away like an evil leaven, lest each generation from a wicked seed, being like to that before it and equally impious, should empty the world to come of saved men. And for this purpose, having warned of a certain righteous man and his children to save themselves in an ark, he sent a deluge of water that all being destroyed, the purified world might be handed over to him who was saved in the ark in order that there might be a second beginning of life. And thus it came to pass. That is amazing. Look at the clarity with which Clement of Alexandria wrote about these early events. And then we come to Irenaeus. And Irenaeus said, for a very long while, wickedness extended and spread and reached and laid hold of the whole race of mankind until a very small seed of righteousness remained among them. And unlawful unions came about on earth as angels linked themselves with offspring of the daughters of men who bore to them sons who on account of their exceeding great size were called giants. The angels then brought to their wives as gifts teachings of evil, for they taught them the virtues of roots and herbs and dyeing and cosmetics and discoveries of precious materials, love philites, hatreds, amours, passions, constraints of love, the bonds of witchcraft, every sorcery and idolatry hateful to God. And when this was come into the world, the affairs of wickedness were propagated to overflowing and those of justice dwindled to very little. Then we come to Anathagoras of Athens who said, Angels fell into impure love of virgins and were subjected by flesh and became negligent and wicked in the management of the things entrusted to them. Of these lovers of virgins, therefore, we begotten those who are called giants. Then we come to the writings of Eusebius who are considered very trustworthy and reliable. Eusebius said, they gave themselves wholly over to all kinds of profanity, now seducing one another, now slaying one another, now eating human flesh, 
and now daring to wage war with God and to undertake those battles of the giants celebrated by all, now planning to fortify earth against heaven and in the madness of ungoverned pride to prepare an attack upon the very God of all. On account of all these things, when they conducted themselves thus, the all-seeing God sent down upon them floods. Then we come to the notable writings of Justin Martyr, who was a great theologian from the early church that many scholars quote, his writings are considered to be very true. And he says, angels whom God appointed over man, they were called watchers. This was after the exit from the Garden of Eden and God loved mankind so much, he assigned angels to help the human race. But Jude tells us and Peter tells us they abandoned their posts. And now Justin Martyr refers to that when he says, the angels whom had been appointed over them transgressed the appointment and were captivated by love of women. Wow. Then we come to the writings of Commodius, an early church leader who said, when God Almighty to beautify the nature of the world, willing that the earth should be visited by angels. When they were sent down, they despised his laws. Such was the beauty of women that it turned them aside so that being contaminated, they could not return to heaven. Rebels from God, they uttered words against him. Then the highest uttered his judgment against them. And from their seed, giants are said to have been born. Then we come to the writings of Clement of Rome, a reliable early church leader who said, angels metamorphosed themselves and partook of human lust and being brought under its subjection, they fell into cohabitation with women and being involved with them and sunk into defilement and altogether emptied of their first power were unable to turn back to the first purity of their nature. But from their unhallowed intercourse, spurious men sprang much greater in nature than ordinary men, whom they afterwards called giants. Then we come to the writings of Tertullian, a great church historian and theologian. He said, we're instructed moreover by our sacred books. How from certain angels who fell of their own free will, there sprang a more wicked demon brood who were condemned of God along with the authors of their race. There are carcasses of the giants of old times still. It will be obvious enough that they're not altogether decayed yet for their bony frames still exist. Then we come to the writings of the early church father Severus, who said, when by this time the human race had increased to a great multitude, certain angels whose habitation was in heaven were captivated by the appearance of some beautiful virgins and cherished illicit desires after them so much so that falling beneath their own proper nature and origin, they left the higher region of which they were inhabitants and allied themselves in earthly marriages. These angels gradually spreading the wicked habits corrupted the human family, and from their alliance, giants are said to have sprung to the mixture of them, of being of a different nature, as a matter of course, giving birth to monsters. Then we come to the writings of Tadian, who said, angels transgressed their appointments and were captivated by the love of women, and begat children who are those who are called demons. And besides, they afterwards subdued the human race to themselves partly by magical writings and partly by fears and the punishments they occasioned and partly by teaching them to offer sacrifices and incense and libations. It goes on to say, and afterwards they sowed murders, wars, adulteries, intemperate deeds and all wickedness. Then we come to the writings of the great theologian Jerome. And Jerome wrote, for when the first tiller of paradise had been entangled by the serpent in his snaky coils and had been forced in consequence to migrate earthwards, afterwards sin gradually grew more and more virulent till the ungodliness of the giants brought in its train the shipwreck of the whole world. That is Jerome. But then we come to writings which are contained in the book of the Jubilees, which is another very early document, which most scholars believe predated the flood, which means Noah carried it onto the ark with him. Listen to this. The book of Jubilees says, 
And in the second week of the tenth jubilee, Mahaliel took unto him to wife Dinah. And she bare him a son in the third week in the sixth year, and he called his name Jared. This is one of the predecessors of Noah, his great, great, great grandfather. For in his days, the angels of the Lord descended on the earth, those who are called the watchers, they that should instruct the children of men that they should do judgment and uprightness on the earth. But the watchers sinned with the daughters of men. For these had begun to unite themselves so as to be defiled with the daughters of men, and even Enoch testified against them. But Noah found grace before the eyes of the Lord. And against the angels whom he had sent upon the earth, God was exceedingly wroth and gave commandment to root them all out of their dominion. After this, they were bound in the depths of the earth forever until the day of the great condemnation, when judgment is executed on all those who have corrupted their ways and their works before the Lord. My friend, the reason I'm reading all these ancient sources to you is I want you to understand that the events we read about in Genesis chapter 6, verse 1, 2, and 4 are real events, describing a bizarre moment when angels, watchers, which God had sent into the earth to help mankind after the fall and the exit from the garden. They began to look upon women and saw they were so beautiful that they abandoned their posts and began to sexually intermingle with women who then gave birth to giants that filled the earth with corruption and violence. And there is historical record after record after record that tells us these events really took place. Wow, it is amazing. And that is the reason why God sent the flood. The flood was God's plan to cleanse the earth and to start all over. God was going to uproot all of the violence, all the evil, all of the corruption, and put Noah and his family back in the very same place where life first began and start all over. It is amazing. Oh, but we're just getting started. I am so excited to get back to the next program. But my friends, I pray you're learning a lot from this series. We're just getting started. But I want you to understand the Bible is reliable. And if the Bible says it happened, then it really, really happened. But hey, I'll be back in just a moment, and I'm going to pray for you. Finally, Rick Renner has unlocked the mystery surrounding the sons of God and the giants that appeared in the earth before the flood during the days of Noah. To film this riveting series, Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood, Rick and his team traveled to eastern Turkey to the ruins of Noah's Ark. In this series, Rick dives deep into the scriptures to give you answers about who are the sons of God in Genesis 6, 1 and 2? What does the promise of 120 years really mean? Where is the real location of Noah's Ark today? Rick says, this is the series I've wanted to teach for decades. With the research we conducted at the real Noah's Ark, along with amazing historical records, I believe this long-awaited series will answer a multitude of questions for people who have wondered about the strange events that occurred before the flood and what Jesus said about them being repeated at the end of the age. This 15-part series is available in digital or physical formats, starting at just $24. In addition, we're offering Dennis Lindsay's astounding book, Giant Fallen Angels, and the Return of the Nephilim. This book will amaze you and open your mind to mysteries hidden in the Bible that have great impact on our world today. This book can be yours for $20. Don't delay. Order this bundle of the 15-part series, Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood, and the book, Giants, Fallen Angels, and the Return of the Nephilim. Call the number on your screen or go to renner.org to order. Call or go online now. Hey friends, this is Rick Renner and I'm standing outside the new TV studio in Moscow. Praise God, most of the interior is already finished. They're still working on Denise's studio, so pray for us as we continue, it's gonna be nice. And if you see the big bulldozer behind me, that's because they're getting ready to do the parking lot. You know, winter comes pretty early in our part of the world, so we need to really seize the moment and get this parking done before the cold weather sets in. But hey, we're making progress, and praise God, the studio is 
paid for. This is all paid for. And I want to say thank you for being the most amazing partners and helping us with this. And now the project in front of us is to pay off the Tulsa facility. We want to retire the debt on the big office complex in Tulsa because when that's paid off, suddenly all those finances are going to be released for us to go on more TV and minister to people all over the world. My friends, the Bible tells us in Proverbs 10, 21, that the lips of the righteous feed many. I know that's my assignment, to feed as many people the Word of God as possible, and I'm doing it with you. Wow, thank you for being a partner. You're part of the giving team that's helping us make amazing progress. And if you're not a part of the giving team yet, please pray about joining us to retire the debt on the Tulsa building. It's not about buildings. It's just about having the space we need so that we can effectively minister to people. We want to retire that debt so we can take the Word of God to more parts of the world where people are crying out for teaching they can trust. And I want to say thank you for everything you do. My friend, I am so thankful that you let me be with you today. I've been bringing you what ancient sources said about fallen angels and giants. I want you to really understand this was an event that happened in past history. And the reason we need to understand this is because Jesus said, as it was in the days of Noah, it will be repeated just before the coming of the Son of Man. And by the time we get to the end of the series, you're going to understand what that means. But to understand what it's going to be like, before the coming of the Son of Man, we need to go back and see what it was like before the time of the flood. And that's why I want you to have the whole 15-part series, which is called Fallen Angels, Giants, Monsters, and the World Before the Flood. And it comes with a tremendous study guide. But notice it also says monsters. So in addition to giants, there were monsters. And in the next program, we're going to see what kind of monsters roamed the earth before the flood. It wasn't just a world of giants. There were also mythological creatures. That's what most people believe, but in fact, they were real. Many of them have their roots in an event that really took place. There were monsters before the flood. Wow, please order this series. You will just devour it. But hey, we're also offering you the book by Dennis Lindsay, which is called Giants, Fallen Angels, and the Return of the Nephilim. As I've told you, I read it in one setting from cover to cover because it is just such a great book. And I know it will open your eyes to a very bizarre, strange time in past history. And it will also answer some questions about the future. But Father, I thank in the name of Jesus that you've been with us today. Thank you. The Bible is so reliable. We thank you for the wonderful Word of God. Help us to love it more and more. In Jesus' name, amen. I'll see you tomorrow, but remember Ecclesiastes 8.4, which says, where the word of a king is, there is power. Renner Ministries is proclaiming the gospel of Jesus Christ through every available media to the uttermost parts of the earth. Discover the many ways you can help us make a difference in lives around the world with the Word of God. We invite you to partner with us in teaching, strengthening, and rescuing lives for the glory of God. Together, we can make a difference that will last throughout eternity. This program was made possible by the giving of the God-called partners of Renner Ministries.